and welcome to the Book Explosion Winter Live Show. This month we've been working with Macmillan and Winter by Marissa Meyer, the fourth and final book in the Epic Lunar Chronicles series. <laughs> it is our book of the month. It's very, very exciting. So we're going to be discussing that. I don't have my book with me because I am home in New Jersey, but as you can see on Kat and Jesse's thing, thing, video streams. <laughs> This is what winter looks like, if you don't know. It was fantastic, and if you haven't read the Lunar Chronicles series yet, definitely go read it. We're going to be spoiling winter in this live show. So just so you know, before we start here, if you haven't read it, it's a bad idea to stay. But this will be up forever, so you can come and watch it when you're ready. Um, we're going to start with introductions. I'm Christine. This is my channel, Pull and Books. I'm Jesse from the channel Jesse the Reader. And I'm Kat from the channel Katie-tastic. Woo! Woo! Hashtag Booksplosion. <laughs> so we're going to be starting off today with our initial thoughts and feels about winter, and then we're going to dive into questions from you guys, and you can send those to us using hashtag Wintersplosion on Twitter, or you can do the comment section if that's working and write your question with hashtag Wintersplosion. Cool. Jesse, you want to kick us off with thoughts? Sure. So basically, this was everything that I wanted in a finale for this series. It was very satisfying. The one thing, and this is kind of going to be controversial maybe, but I think somebody should have died. I'm just throwing that out there. I think somebody should have died. That's my one thing that I was like, maybe this should have happened. But other than that, like I freaking love this book. I love that everybody got their happy ending, and it was just fantastic. Action-packed. Romance. Loved it. Cat. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I'm, I'm, like, narrowing in on that point that you said was going to be controversial. I don't necessarily disagree with you, because, like, it was a finale, and, like, it's, it's so much... Like, these people are have been doing this dangerous stuff for so long. Like, it would be so much more realistic if someone died, but I'm glad that no one did. Like, I wanted everyone to have their happy ending. It is more of, like, the, the sugar-coated fairy tale aspect. Um, although, like, it wasn't without trauma. Like, some... Right. Bad stuff happened to some yeah. these characters. Like, they went through uh, some stuff. So I'm not, like, set on that point that someone should have died. But um, I, I, maybe they should have. I want to clarify that I didn't want anybody to die, but I just think it would have been <laughs> yeah. more realistic for somebody to die. I'm just throwing no, I, that I, out there. Yeah. I totally get exactly what you mean. But, um, yeah, I, I loved this book. I thought it was a fantastic finale. And, like, so often I find myself kind of let down by finales, and I'm like, this could have been better. This was just, like, missing a little something. But this was just great. It was, it was everything I wanted. And it was so big, like, so much happened, and I just, uh, I loved it. Yeah, I agree. It was fantastic, and it was, like, everything we needed in a closing book. I disagree on the dying thing, specifically <laughs> because I didn't think anyone was going to die because it's a fairy tale. Yeah. Aspect. Sure. And okay, but it's like Disney fairy tales versus, like, Actual fairy tales. I know, I know. The Disney fairy tale aspect, though, the Disney fairy tale. I know, I know fairy tales are dark and people die, but in this fairy tale, I was like, it's Cinderella, Cinderella, and all that stuff. I thought that maybe someone would lose some limbs and become cyborg-y, and Thorn did it. This is spoiler. Thorn did it. <laughs> <laughs> These two fingers. I but I did get that comment a few times in my like winter book talk about like so no one died. So it's like unrealistic. And I'm like fairy tales are fairy tales. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Let it be. I don't know. Not, none of our core cast died, but yeah. a lot of yeah. people died. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. No, like um, I really feel like this revolution felt realer than any of the revolution I've read before. Like, you could just feel the scope of it so much more than you can usually feel. Like, usually you follow your main character, and it's like, okay, they're doing a revolution, but you don't really feel everyone else's point of view. And here you really did, in my opinion, I think, at least. Um, yeah, and so I feel like it was forgivable that no one died. I thought maybe Iko would go, and then we'd have to fix her, but yeah. she didn't. <laughs> What did you, what star ratings did you guys get? I saw, oh, okay. No, go ahead. I, about, back to the death thing, like, I, I saw a question that I feel like, um, if, if you could have seen one of our good characters get killed off, who would it be? Ooh. 
So like, if if someone was gonna die, oh. who would you guys think? Wait, Kat, you're frozen right now. What the heck's going on? She's not frozen for me. <laughs> okay, now she's back online. Okay, good. <laughs> um, um, you guys have an answer for that? I think maybe just Wolf because throughout the series he's been my least favorite. I started to like him a lot more in this book for some reason. I don't know why, but like yeah. my opinion on him really changed because I just like saw a different side of him, I guess. Um, so maybe just Wolf, just because like through, like up until this point he was my least favorite. So yeah, yeah I, I would also say Wolf, not because he's my least favorite, but just because like I don't know how he's gonna move on from this point. Like he got messed up, being like transformed into like the upgraded version of the wolf monster and like I, Christine you talked about this in your book talk about how it's like yeah he's just gonna go live on the farm and we're not gonna talk about how he has bloodlust and he's like uh, like he's not the same as he was like it's not just an appearance thing like <laughs> yeah no it, it, it felt like we didn't really address it <laughs> yeah, like are we, are we gonna talk about this like wolf wants to kill people a lot all the time now <laughs> Yeah, it's just weird that we got that that chapter from his point of view to really feel how horrible it is, and then it wasn't really a big factor at all. But yeah, like when we got that chapter, like I thought I thought Wolf was dead. Like I was like, oh, this is it. Like there's he can't come back from this. Like there's, there's no coming back. Like he's he's done for. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought that maybe because Scarlet, you know, got the plague. So I thought maybe something bad would happen to Wolf too, but then nobody died. <laughs> Everything was fine. Oh, I don't know. Did this part make it into my book talk where I was talking about Emil, like her friend? I don't think it did. I think that got cut out. Okay, I was just like, Cinder gets stabbed in the stomach at the end, and then our next chapter is a stupid conversation with a meal, her friend. I was like, who the fuck is this? I don't give a shit. Why are we here? That, that, is, that is one thing that I really noticed, too. I was, I was just like, that was kind of a clunky transition. Cause yeah, it was like, a really bad transition. Flying, fake black, and then it's like, oh, casual catch-up with my earthen friend. Oh, no! <laughs> really? This first? <laughs> oh, I think it was... I thought it was an attempt to, like, build suspense. It was like, Cinder was alive. But I was just like, this is irrelevant. <laughs> um, let's see. Do we want to start taking questions? Yeah, Christine, did you also think that Wolf, like, if if someone had to die, oh, it would have been... Crap, the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I don't know. that. I mean, like, I'm... The first person that jumped in mind was, like, Jason. <laughs> um, oh, just because I'm not a huge fan of him, but I understand him now, and I don't want Winter to be alone. She's so sweet. Um, so I guess I'd pick Wolf, too, or Scarlet. They're my two least favorites. You can't kill Kai or Cinder. Right. Like, if you killed Kai, Cinder would be, like, the moon empress, and Torin would take over. I mean, that could have happened, but I don't want it to happen. <laughs> and Thorn and Cress, no way. <laughs> yeah. So is our, Christine, are Cinder and Kai still your favorite? I... Uh, I couldn't decide. <laughs> who are they? Who are you? Is Cress your Thorn your favorite? Cress and Thorn. I yeah. love Cinder and Kai, but Cress and Thorn. Same, Cress and Thorn, I'm all about yeah. it. I like I can't help but love them. And I it feels like I love them more than Cinder and Kai, but I did like the build of Cinder and Kai's relationship a lot. Yeah. I, I thought they were felt really real the way they interacted. Um yeah. whereas Wolf and Scarlet felt like insta love. <laughs> yeah, I oh, the relationship drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was so insta love you for me, like personally, like that's what I thought about it. That's why I, I really don't like their relationship. But yeah, so I don't know. I don't like. I read Scarlet so long ago, like so many books since yeah. then that it's not as fresh. And like I just remember how much I loved Cress and I loved Cress and Thorn together. Yeah. So that's like what out the most. But we did get more Cinder and Kai than I feel like anyone else in this book. Yeah. Like not all these together, but like more points of view, and, like, they were more of, like, the central couple. I feel like more than Winter and Jason. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Huh? 
Is it, it's like Cinder's story. Every story is yeah. Cinder's that way. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, wait, what, what are you just saying? Because I wanted to comment on that. Um, oh, my God. Cinder I were more the central. Oh, oh the Insta Love thing. Yeah. Okay. I thought I really didn't like the book Scarlet. I went back and watched my Scarlet book talk, and I did like Scarlet. <laughs> I didn't like Scarlet, the character, but I liked the book because there's a lot of Cinder Thorn stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's when Thorn's introduced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I forgot about that. But, yeah, I agree that it was really Insta Lovey for them. They're just, like, all passion and, like, French and uh, French fighting and, like, <laughs> No, they were like the opposite of Cinder guy. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, I love I, but I really, really loved Cinder and Kai's relationship in this book, especially the arc that it took and how it just came full circle like that. Ending scene was like perfect. I, I loved it that. so much. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> um, do you guys have a favorite cover out of the? Ooh. Like I feel like none of the covers are like fantastic, but they're not. Yeah. None of them are bad. Yeah, they all. Oh, I for reference. <laughs> I think I like the the crest one the best. I think I like Cinder. I don't know which one I like the best. It's just a shoe. <laughs> but it's, it's iconic. <laughs> yeah, it's iconic. Yeah. It's, I, I kind of like the the cover of like the novella bind up that's coming out, Stars Above. Have you guys seen it? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a cover out for it with like a tiara on a pillow. I really like that cover. I think I like that one too. I can't yeah. remember, but I remember seeing it and being like, "That's pretty." What's in it? And the novella bind up. Yeah. There's gonna be like an epilogue, I think. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? I mean, I, I, it's. They called it like the wedding or something. So somebody's getting married. Oh, I, don't know who I hope so. <laughs> I bet it won't be. I bet it'll be Scarlet. And <laughs> Stupid them. They're like all settled in on Earth. Yeah, it's true. With their neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> on the farm. Like, what is Scarlet? 18? Is she even 18? I don't know. That's the thing. Like, they all just seem so much okay. older in these yeah. books. Like, Cinder they can't be not. teenagers. Okay. They're not teenagers. Okay. Like, I couldn't believe that six... I forgot how old Cinder was, and then I looked at my old book talk, and she's 16, and I was yeah, like... No. No. <laughs> no. Like, what's the time period for these books? Like, does it just take over, like, a six-month time period? It's not a yeah. It's, like, less than a year. Yeah. yeah. She does it's not read, like, a 16-year-old in this book, though. No. Like, I don't remember Cinder that much, like, how she I don't know. I've seen that more and more lately. Like, um, you, I think you guys agree yeah. about the Legend series. Like, Legend, yeah. um, May and June are, like, 15. It's like, no, they're not. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. And Six of Crows, too, we were talking about that, how, like, they all oh. seem so much older. Because, like, <laughs> like, they're written by people who are older, yeah. and... Like, we don't want to read about actual 15-year-olds because they're actually so angsty and indecisive. <laughs> so true. Usually. I'm not, no offense to anyone. Yeah, no offense out there, no. I'm just, I've been that age, too, and that's yeah. how I was. So, right. like, I'm just, like, and the people that we read from are, like, their shit is together. And when you're, when you're teenagers, you're like, oh, what's my life? <laughs> um, let's see. How does winter rank among your favorite conclusions? Well, I think we have to talk about what are your favorite finale books, guys? Deathly Hallows. Yeah. Uh, Conqueror Princess. Yes. I haven't read it yet. City of Heavenly Fire. I haven't read it yet. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is really up there. Yeah. I, I feel like I would have to read the Cassie Clare books again to, like, really be sure. Because right now I'm so fresh from this one, like... This is standing out more, but I remember loving Clockwork Princess and City of Heavenly Fire a lot. Yeah, um, I mean, I feel like City of Heavenly Fire did this thing where it, like, introduced a new series and closed the old one, which was a different, like, Winter just took everything to close this one. Right. So, um, but, I don't know, I still think they're both fantastic. I think I, I liked this one more than Heavenly Fire, but I, I think I liked Clockwork Princess more. I think. I don't know. I really love, like, it's just so much happened in this one. Mm -hmm. And, like, it, like everything was just wrapped up so nicely. 
but like there, you still know that there's still stories to come. Like all the characters leave in a place where like they're not done forever. Like Cress and Thorin are gonna be on the ship, and like they're working on all the problems. And I don't know. I, this is a fantastic finale. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like right at the top there. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's like a legion at the bottom, second <laughs> columns at the top. <laughs> like, probably, and then this is like right under it, I feel like, for me. And then there's Clocker Princesses right next to Deathly Hallows. I feel like those are kind of tied in my mind. For, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of like any other closers right now. No, I'm struggling. I, is, I, I can't think of some, but they don't. They're not they're good. Good. Yeah, they don't compare to, like, that, yeah. I said this in my wrap-up the other day, like, I'm so often disappointed with finales, like, at least a little bit. Like, there's so few finales where I'm, like, I'm completely happy with this. Yeah. Um, like, that's, those are the ones I list, like, Deathly Hallows, Clockwork Princess, like, Winter, like, there's there's not a whole lot. Um, I, lo- I, I did love Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. Yeah. Um, that was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, like, a lot of them I'm thinking of are dystopians, and dystopians are always three books, and three books is not enough for that story. Yeah. So the finales are always disappointing. Um, You just want so much more. Yeah. I think for me it's, like, my my, third. Like, it's uh, Deathly Hallows, Library of Souls, and then Winter. Oh, Library of Souls is up there. Library of Souls and Winter are, like, neck and neck, because I had a few Uh. issues with Library of Souls, but... So before last month, what was up there with Deathly Hallows? Because like you just read both of these other books. <laughs> Nothing, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I've read no. The thing is, I'm like really bad at finishing series, so I have like a lot of unfinished series. So I haven't gotten to the finale yet. Like I haven't finished the Infernal Devices, and I haven't finished the Mortal Instrument series, and like several other ones on my shelf. So. Yeah, and like I'm trying to think, like Percy Jackson, the first series, like. It was a good finale, but it wasn't like it didn't feel final. Right. Was the other series. Exactly. Um, and then of course, Heroes of Olympus kind of has like a letdown of a, of a finale because it just doesn't feel like a finale at all. Kat, what about the Mistborn trilogy? You read that? Oh right? yeah. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, yeah that was a good finale. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought about that, and then I forgot to ask you. <laughs> you guys, you guys need to finish that. It's I know. Really <laughs> Just add it on to my I unfinished series list. Huh? I want to read it hopefully in January. I'm thinking of getting the audiobooks, but now I'm like hooked on Harry Potter audiobooks. Mm. <laughs> um, let's find another question. We got a lot of questions. There's so many. Okay, um, a couple of people are asking about Scarlet killing Amory and Scarlet or, uh, and Winter oh. using her power for the first time. Like, How do how we, we feel? <laughs> I've been waiting for Winter to crack the entire time. Yeah. There were so many times where it's like, if you used it, like things would have gone way better. Um, I was not expecting her to go batshit. <laughs> I didn't really care at the time because so much else was going on. Right. I mean, like, she had it's to- hard to care because of that factor. Like, there's just so much going on that you can't like sit there and be like, oh no, like caught up yeah. in that moment. Like, you just kind of keep going. So. Yeah. Yeah, because didn't we move on from that point to like? That yeah. climax scene where like Thorn and Cress and yeah. like yeah yeah <laughs> that scene was, was, was so nerve wracking. Yeah. I was screaming at my book like <laughs> Chris Thorn there and like he he shows up and he's walking off the edge and Cinder saves him and then he's like punching her in the face <laughs> and Cress shows up and they're like shooting. Stabbing each other, and I'm like, <laughs> and the my whole babies! Time, the whole time, like, Thorn punches her, and she's like, I'm not, that's not me, that's not me! Stab! I'm sorry, like, I did not mean to stab you. <laughs> yeah, we know, Thorn. <laughs> uh, no, anyways, back, back to Winter. Like, the thing about Winter is, like, I feel like she was kind of underutilized. Like, you know, she was. It's sticking to, like, her fairy tale story, but I feel like that almost constrained her character a little bit, because I really liked her. Like, she's yeah. kind of crazy, but she's also really nice, and, like, I just wanted to see more from her, like, her doing more stuff. Um, I agree. I don't, I don't know. Like... Even when it came to for her to, like, she said she was going to go do the army, like, she was too scared to miss the army. Like, Scarlet had to do it for her. It ended up being Scarlet who did everything that Winter was supposed to do. Right. And then 
I, I did, like you just said, I expected Winter to, like, come in at the end and use her power with Cinder, and she, she didn't. <laughs> she just was crazy. Like, Winter kind of had her own climactic scene there against Amory, and she wasn't really involved in the final thing against Queen Lavana when she has just as much right as Cinder to be there taking her down. Like, yeah. Queen Lavana ruined her life, like, 80 times over. I, I can't. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and I don't know why that, I mean, I see, like, the way it went was okay, but, like, I think that would have made for a really great scene to see her confront Lavana because she never did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, Lavana, like, the last time Lavana saw her, or even, like, knew about her, was like, oh, she gave her the candied apple and the, the yeah, one. bitch. <laughs> you on the plane. Yeah, but aside from that, it's like, oh, like, she ordered to have Winter killed, and then Winter was killed but not killed, and then, like, that was kind of it for Levon and Winter, and I just, I wanted Winter to have a stronger arc, like, more of a, a purpose or something yeah. going on there. I agree. I think, you know what would have been cool? If that moment when they were like, <laughs> like, Winter came from behind, it was just like, <laughs> 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 um... But that didn't happen. But, like, that would have been perfect because she's one of the only ones that could be of use in that situation. Everyone else that came in, I was like, are you kidding me? Leave. <laughs> like, the only people who, like, should have been there, uh, like, Cress is immune to the yeah. control, but, like, she's Cress. Like, she's, yeah. she's not a fighter. Yeah. And then is also immune to the control, but, like, he's crazy now because right. they made him all bloodlusty, alpha, wolf man. Mm. <laughs> I can't believe Scarlet went in there. Like, that was I mean, just like, like, really? I know. What, the, what are you doing? <laughs> like, actually, you already did this. Like, they already <laughs> took you, and you got captured in the cage for a month. <laughs> Not just that, but also in all the previous scenes. Like, Winter told her to kill Amory. All, all the thermoturges were, like, using her to kill civilians, and she's, like, telling them to run away from her. <laughs> It's like, Scarlet, you know this. You know you can't go up against the manipulation. He just, like, runs into situations being like, I can help! <laughs> uh. Like, yeah, that, that was also the part, uh, or the thing where, like, everyone else of, like, our core characters were in that throne room during that final climactic scene, except for Winter and Jason. Oh, and, like, they, they're, like, they're the Lunars. Like, they should belong there, like, just as much as Cinder. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, like, if there's one thing I would change about that, I, in the book, I think I would change that. I wouldn't yeah. kill someone, I'd put Winter in that room. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, people are asking about our year. Let's wait on those. Which, who can y'all see as these characters in a live adaptation? <laughs> live adaptation. Well, have you guys casted people? Oh, uh, I have not. I've casted yeah, a few. I don't really cast people. I've I casted um Thorn is Captain Hook from Once Upon a Time. And like I've mentioned this before, like I've never even watched him on Once Upon a Time. I just know his face and that's like <laughs> Thorn. Um but also Kai is um Derek from Teen Wolf. <laughs> Who isn't Asian, and I'm sure Kai is because he's a new Beijing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, I couldn't, I tried to replace him with Harry Shum in my mind, and, like, it wasn't working. Because um, <laughs> he's already, like, locked in. I can't, like, get a cinder in my mind right. So. Um, who is it? Who is it? Like, I can't see, like, Shane Mitchell. Is that who I'm thinking of? Oh, yeah. And Pretty Little Liars? Yeah, Pretty Little Liars, yeah, I could totally see that. I can see that. I, I pictured her more, like, slight, because she was, like, so beaten down, I feel like. And for, for Kai, I could name, like, half a dozen actors I've seen in Korean dramas. Korean dramas, I think. Uh, <laughs> um, for Cress, I just actually picture, uh, like, Kangol. <laughs> <laughs> That's my picture for Cress and Thorn is the animated <laughs> <laughs> Wolf like I like I picture the beast from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, so stupid. <laughs> um, that was another 
question I saw earlier. Um, if you guys could add another fairy tale, another couple into the series, like what retelling, what fairy tale would you like? To the Little Mermaid. <laughs> 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 um, no. uh, Are we echoing? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll. <laughs> Hello? Is it me? It's still. It's yeah, me. It's still, yeah, it's still, yeah, it's still, Damn it. Okay. Okay, guys, I would put in, I'm thinking Mulan. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too, yeah. Mulan. Yeah. All about that. <laughs> yeah, she'd be in New Beijing doing something cool. Yeah. Like, mm, what would be her thing? Because Mulan is like a warrior. Yeah. She'd be a karate teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Just a karate teacher. <laughs> Not Karate is important to fighting. <laughs> would she'd she be able to have her little dragon guy with her? Um, he would be a puppy. Maybe like robot dragon. Oh yeah, <laughs> robot dragon. The cyborg <laughs> dragon. Cyborg dragon. The, the latest android model. <laughs> Let's see here. Somebody asked, "How do you feel about Shadowhunter Academy, guys?" This is about water chemicals. <laughs> Uh, 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 If you could be a cyborg, would you? And what parts would you have replaced? Ooh. That is a cool question, because I don't want to lose a limb or anything. <laughs> yeah, like, like, if I did, I would get a cyborg replacement. Yeah, yeah, if I did, I'd definitely. Be like, yeah, this arm, just take it off. <laughs> yeah, well, let me just replace this with a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I love, like, the, the computer in your brain thing that Cinder has going for her, like... Yeah, but how creepy is it when they, like, open her to, like, slug things in? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was not awesome, but, I mean, like, getting brain surgery, like, would that be better? Like, it's still... No, it's brain surgery. This is always in your head. Like, there's, like, a pocket that just opens up behind you. <laughs> Yeah, alright. I mean, it'd be worth it, though, for all the, like, cool things that you can do. Well, it'd be worth it if you lost a limb. <laughs> if only if you lost a limb. <laughs> I don't want to go into that surgery just to put a computer in my brain. I have my, uh, cell phone. I'm good. But, like, the you, are cool. you don't need a bat, you don't need to charge it. Just get, like, tweets right directly to your brain. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> No, like, I would, if I lost a finger, that would be a cool thing to have, like, a knife in my finger. <laughs> Just wash that off, bananas, chop them up every night. <laughs> For my old man. <laughs> of course, the first thought comes to mind. I could chop up my banana. <laughs> yeah, for self-defense, just like, utility, it's like, no, it's... No, it's, it's a banana. <laughs> Also, to open packages. <laughs> oh, no, there you go. Even better, Christine. <laughs> a lot of Amazon packages coming in. <laughs> That'd be a cool unboxing video to make. <laughs> Guys, look it out. <laughs> Got my new finger just to do an unboxing video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Weird. <clears throat> Which character annoyed you the most? I think we've gone over this already. <laughs> Wolf. Wolf. The main characters, but I still, I just, I've always hated um, Cinder's stepmom and yeah. Her. yeah. Oh, what? Someone said, "What did you think about um, like their encounter?" Oh, with, like Cinder's encounter with her stepmom. Yeah, and and her stepsister. I thought she was like really big. Uh, as a person, and something that a, an older person would do, like, give them lots of money. <laughs> yeah. I, like, cause they were really... I mean, you still saw her hatred for them, though. Like, yeah. she still, like, had those thoughts, like, oh, I hate her. Blah, blah. Yeah, but then she was, but like... she still oh, was nice to them. Yeah. <laughs> then... But... Yeah. It just goes to show, like, how good of a person Cinder is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, like... She didn't need to be that nice. <laughs> not not killing them was like yeah. pretty cool on her part. I think after yeah. everything they did to her, and they, they like just they treated her like shit for so many years, and they they tried to kill Iko, and I they didn't deserve what she gave to them at the yeah. end. Yeah, 
And they gave her up, like, a day before. They were like, yeah, we pledged fealty to you, evil queen bitch that's going to throw, like, tear Cinder apart limb from limb. They literally did that, like, right in front of her. Without second thought, they were just like, yeah, no, <laughs> forget her. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah she's, she's kind of my stepdaughter, but we don't like to talk about that. <laughs> it was, they were mean. <laughs> um, and the, the, most, the most frustrating thing is that they never realized how much she cared about um, the younger sister. Yeah. Uh, so like, e even still at the end, they were like, oh yeah, I, I know you gave the cure to that other little boy, and the, but you didn't yeah. It's like... <laughs> I was like, why? Can you please just explain to them exactly what happened right now? Because I cannot sit here and listen to them say that. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, this is a little off topic, but um, I got this question a lot too, and they were... Um, because I cut this out of my book job, but I did talk about the fact that, like, Aiko, there was, like, an allusion to her having a relationship with that yeah. girl. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. I wonder like, if he'll touch on it in Stars Above, like, in the epilogue. Because, really, like, it was so set up to be... So, yeah. like, a relationship was developing, and whether or not yeah. it was going to lead to, like, a romantic couple thing, like, they were at least kind of changing each other's points of view, like, yeah. showing him that, like, cyborg, or androids aren't, like, terrible, and... Yeah, like, I really, like, Aiko really started to make me think, like, weirdly in this book, because when you have someone like Aiko, who has personality and, like, cares about her friends and stuff, like, where do you draw the line between, like, machine and a person? Like, where do you draw the line with rights? Like, if she was in love with this guy... This guy is, like, in love with a computer, you know? It's, like, wh what happens there? What is this? Like, and is, is it weird for him to be, like, in love with an inanimate object, you know? It's, it's, and it's, it's already so touchy about cyborgs. Like, yeah. Cinder, who is a human, well, yeah. a human litter, um, but, like, she has a, a, a robot parts, and, like, yeah. so it's discriminated against. She's, she's less than a, a normal person, like, I, yeah, the line is already blurred with just the idea of a cyborg. Right. Yeah. It's just a strange thing to think about. Like, what is, are people just going to, like, like, if you can't find a human mate, are you just going to, like, create an android that's perfect for you? Like, what is this? The thing is, though, like, Aiko is a, an exception. You know, she has, like, the defective personality chip, which is what makes her, like... I don't know, have more of a personality, like, closer to human, whereas a lot of the other cyborgs we saw, like, um, Kai's robot, Naini, Na yeah. um, is more of a robot. Um, yeah, but couldn't Cinder make more, like, evolved? Because she said she has an evolved personality chip. It was a chip, too, that, like, made a difference. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're getting to, like, crazy, like, crazy sci-fi yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What was I thinking of? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Mm -mm. But it was definitely set up with that guard. It was like such a meat cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a meat cute. Thanks for not killing me. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you feel the series wrapped up nicely? Yes. <laughs> There's an interesting question here. Um, oh, dang it. I just missed it. Gosh <laughs> dang it. Oh, wait. Do you believe that the mutual soldiers were immune to the sickness? And if so, should Meyer had touched on that point? The soldiers... Like, no. Levada's soldiers? Because they were scared of it. Remember that guy was... The, the, head, the head captain was like, I don't want to touch her because she's sick. Yeah. What was his name? Storm. Strong. Storm. I called him Storm for a lot, but then I was like, oh, the R is in the wrong place for that. <laughs> uh, and he, he died at the end. I was sad about that. I know, because yeah. he was like, developing as a person. <laughs> he was going through his wolf transformation. Um, I don't know if they were immune. I don't remember if... I, d I really don't think they were because, specifically because he was like, I'm not going to touch her, I'm going to get the plague. Because, like, 
I don't think it was that he that he was worried about him getting it, although maybe he just didn't know for sure if he would or not. But he yeah, could. But, yeah, no him. one was immune to this one though. Right. Like no one was immune. She said like it's just everyone can take the. the yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone was immune. I think there's just uh, the antidote that like anyone yeah. can take. The antidote. The antidote was like really conveniently quick. <laughs> like, they took it in seconds later. It's like oh, I'm, oh, I'm back. <laughs> so easy. The funny thing too is that like Ty is doing all this to get the antidote, and then like Jason and Cinder just like steal a bunch. I know. <laughs> I know. I was like, that was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it literally, it doesn't take very long. <laughs> they just get it and go. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. What storyline did you guys feel yourself getting most excited to read about? And winter, specifically? Yeah, winter. Okay. I think Crescent Thorn for me in this one. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to say Crescent Thorn because, like, I just, I love them together. But I also feel like the Cinder and Kai, just it was so much more epic, like with everything going on. Like it was the main storyline here. So, I don't know, I, but I loved Crescent Thorn so much. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to say Crescent Thorn too. <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. That's my favorite. I most looked forward to, maybe because it was kind of a break from like the epic, crazy rebellion plotline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and but I honestly think that like all the point of views were really great yeah. in this book. It was there was never one. Interesting. Like I literally only didn't like that wolf chapter. <laughs> that's what I was like. Okay, next, next, next. <laughs> but I, I liked that one though because it was horrifying. I was like, oh my god, like wolf is done. <laughs> I was just really upset. I, was, I do not want this. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, not again. I was like, Wolf finally got his shit together and wasn't attacking people or the wall every five seconds. <laughs> oh, um, but, yeah, everyone was great. But Crescent Thorn, I, like, kept waiting. I wanted their relationship stuff to work out. <laughs> yeah, that was also one of the nicer ones because they were in that, like, will they, won't they stage. Like, yeah. Crescent Cinder, they locked down. Scarlet and Wolf, locked down. Winter and Jason, like, they might not completely know it, but, like, we, we see that they're, they're locked down. They're locked down, yeah. Crescent and Thorn, like, they're in love, but, like, they still haven't talked about it, and, like, admitted it to each other, and, like, right. still the, like, just, just kiss already. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just, like, Cres, get over it and tell them how you feel. <laughs> No, it was like, Thorn, get over it and tell her how you feel. Well, Cress was like, he doesn't like me. Like, look away. Every day he looks at me and, like, stares at me. He specifically told her, like, the last last he heard, he was like, yeah, I like you, but don't get the wrong idea. So well, that was, like, right in the beginning <laughs> when she was like, I think I love you. Wasn't it? No, I, no. I'm struggling to remember that, too. How did you guys feel about like the lunar scene though? Like when that lunar um I, called him I over and like they kiss or whatever? I thought as soon as he said I love you, I was like, oh my god, I bet she's appearing as <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't care. No, I didn't jump to that conclusion. I thought that it was just the lunar like completely messing with Manipulating him. Manipulating him, yeah. Stop, like, like it was so frustrating though, because Chris was like, Are you kidding me right now? Like <laughs> I knew that, but like that spurred her on to like make things happen. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm like, it's here, it's here, the part. <laughs> <laughs> and she was dressed as like a weird butterfly. <laughs> yeah. He was like wearing a purple tux. Um, let's see. Did you think Cress was gonna die at Thorn's hands? No. <laughs> no, I didn't see that happening at all. <laughs> Like well, that'd be too traumatizing. Oh my yeah, god! Like, Thorn would never come back from that. Like, I bet he would like kill himself. <laughs> it wouldn't be like really. Probably, messy. yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Did I, did you guys cry during winter? I did not cry. I. If somebody would have died, I probably would have. But yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody that I cared about. But I, I cried a little bit at the end, but not out of sadness. It was just like. Emotions of everything wrapping up and like 
Yeah. yeah. All the, all the tying up of all the little things, like Cress and Thorn and Cinder and Kai at the very end. I cried at two parts, like not, but it wasn't hard crying. It was like shedding a single tear. Right. But like that part when um, Cinder was gonna give herself up, and they all like hugged her to stop her. And I cried, and then when I when like Kat was saying like the ending closing feelings, like when it was over, it was just like, no, done. <laughs> it was an epic story. Yeah. See, that's, like, that's what I usually cry at books. Like, I, I rarely cry with books, but when it happens, it's usually just, like, when I close the book and I and I start crying a little bit. So I'm just like, oh, emotions, like, <laughs> another journey with this one. It was like a happy cry for this ending, though, right? Yeah, like, yeah, no, it's, no. like, such a happy feeling at the end of this book. It's like, ah, oh, that was so good. <laughs> um, If you guys read Ferris, which... I know, Jesse, you read it. Kat, did you read Ferris? Yeah, Kat read it, too. Okay, what did you guys, did you guys, are you happy you read it before this? Would it make a really big difference on your emotional yeah. impact? I mean, I'm, I'm very happy I read it because not only did it, like, straighten out all the relationships between Lavana, Cinder, and Winter, but it gave me a lot of insight into Lavana and, like, I, I just, I know so much more about her and how she got to where she is. And, like, um... We got to meet Winter's dad and Winter's mom, and all oh, that's like I. You guys should have read Ferris. Like, well, I'm I'm like happy that I read Ferris, but I I'm per, I personally don't think it's necessary to the series. No, like, it's I can, not. I think you can. Yeah, but... it does give you like that backstory, like Lavana's yeah. backstory, but it's not necessary. No, not necessary. Yeah. But... Yeah, and, like, I, I wasn't sure what it was trying to do either. Like, I wasn't sure if it was trying to make me feel bad for Lavana or if it was trying to, like, make me just realize how bad of a person she is. Because, like, I mean, like, it just... It both for me. Like, I yeah. felt bad for her, but I was also, like, it doesn't excuse what a terrible human right. being you are. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, there's no no excuse for what you're doing right now. No. But, you know, you, you have, you're you in a pretty crappy situation, so... Right. Not, like, I... I feel bad for you, but I also hate you. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys feel about the Winter Jason relationship? Because I th I thought it was really nice. Because like they clearly just aren't together just for one reason, just because of Lavana. Like I, I'm, I don't know. It was nicer than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like really weird. Yeah, and we also saw a little bit of Winter and Jason in Ferris. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I like them together. I, I liked the dynamic. Um, I like that they were, like, childhood friends, and, mm -hmm. you know, their dads were guards together, and they were best friends, and, like, so the kids played together. Um, yeah, I, I liked it. I just, I wish, I feel like m both of them could have been more utilized and, like, had more of a epic story arc. Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing they didn't like. I agree with that. They weren't there for the climax, so yeah. they were just kind of off on their own. Yeah, that's like they felt separate from the other characters. Am I echoing again? Not really. So. <laughs> like, they felt separate from the other ones, and even, like, Winter and Cinder never had a scene together. Yeah. Most finale, and they're, they're cousins, and, like... Right. I, I felt like Winter would, would maybe become the queen. Like, they would get rid of the whole bloodline thing and put Winter in charge because, like, the people loved her and she was a princess. Um, I, mean, I think the smarter decision, though, is the Republic just because it's so easy to corrupt one one person. It's so easy to become corrupt, um, power-hungry. Uh, so I, I wanted to... I don't know. I'd like to see... Oh, wait! The wedding is going to be Kai and Cinder. Isn't it going to be... <laughs> Because, like, maybe she'll have set up the Republic and she'll have come back down to Earth. It depends on how long in the future it is. If it's yeah. really near the finale, I feel like it's got to be Scarlet and Wolf. Or yeah. Crescent Thorn, maybe. But if, but if it's, like, years down the line, once the... Even, Republic like, a year down the line, she might be able to, like, set up... I don't know. Maybe. Uh, even at the end, like... It doesn't sound like she has marriage immediately on her mind. She's 16, remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she, though. 16-year-old. And she's talking about, like, uh, like when Kai asked her, you know, like, hey, I, you know, I am I am emperor, like, someday. Uh, yeah. You might be interested in being an empress, maybe, possibly. Wait, how old is Kai? How old is he's Kai 19. supposed to be? 19? Okay. I was like, I feel like he's, like, 18, 19, yeah. Yeah, yeah which doesn't feel it real either. So. <laughs> 
Um, I, I believe I believe nineteen for Kai. I believe nineteen. Eighteen is a little pushing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I someone asked the question, which I think is like an interesting thing. Like, Levana, is Lavana a character you love to hate, or you just hate? And for me, she was just like just hatred. She was yeah. like very. It it came down to like something very, like very narcissistic, like reason that she was so evil. <laughs> yeah, and with 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 love to hate characters, it's usually because they're like sassy mean. Um, with Lavana, like she was a she was a great character. She was really interesting, and like she was a great villain, but. Yeah, I just I just hated her. Yeah, same. I mean, even Voldemort, I feel like I had more of a love to hate than right. a Nirvana. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, we're coming down the nitty gritty. We'll probably take a few more questions, then we'll talk about like our favorite book this year and our next book of the month. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I like this question. When did you laugh the most? Like, what was the scene that made you laugh the most? No, I know my. So many. <laughs> You I loved know. the rice scene when Thorne was like, Oh my god, I know. <laughs> so funny. That was so funny. <laughs> it just like made me think about like me putting my like phone in the Yeah, seat. exactly. <laughs> it was a beautiful I've moment. I've never done that before. You haven't? Oh. I just put a copy on my phone yesterday and I had to do that. <laughs> my I've done it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> like, um... I all the Thorn had a lot of funny parts. I'm I don't know. I'm I'm blanking on like a really a part that other than that now. I have another like moment that I just like loved. It's like the they had that like party thing like before. Uh, what was it? They like had cake or something. What oh, yeah, right you know what I'm talking that. about? They like had that moment all together. I was just like, ah, oh, this is such like a happy moment between mm -hmm. everybody. Like, that whole section where they were in that mansion, kind of in between wars, just fixing themselves was nice. Yeah. Like, um, it, they just had some nice character moments in there. Um, I'm trying to think. And everything on the spaceship before they landed with Kai and Cinder was really nice. And they were like, um, when she was like fixing things, and she was like, it's so easy, and she was like, yeah, right. I don't, I don't remember the banter. The banter was fun. <laughs> I'm going to restart because I think I'm making an echo. Okay. Yeah, I'm like slipping through the book trying to find specific things, but it's just, it's the banter in general. Like, whenever the the crew is all together and they're talking and being sassy and bantery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, that crest scene, the crest makeout scene, I found to be like wonderful and funny and adorable and everything. <laughs> also, like the the thorn scene at the end where he's like, "This is how the speech was supposed to go." <laughs> like, yes. Oh my god, that was so cute. <laughs> I was like, he's trying to ask you out, Chris, in a really weird way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. Yeah, okay, do we have one more question before we start talking about other things, let's see. Mm -hmm. um, this is a question that we should probably just address. Is this a series where you can start, wait, where you can just pick up one, wait, this is a confusing question. No, You're asking you if I can just not. pick up like any of the books yeah. and read them. No, you need to read them. Yeah. 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 The thing is, it sounds like it's about each individual person because right. of the titles, but it's actually just they're adding that character into the story. It's a series. You have to read it back to back. <laughs> yeah. First of all, if you're asking that question, you shouldn't be watching. Yeah, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> Go away. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. you're spoiled like crazy. Okay. But um, no, that's that's what I thought at first. I was like, oh yeah, the first book is about Cinder, then the second book is gonna be like a companion novel. But no, it is a sequential series. You read yeah. book one, then two, then three, then four. And you want to read them all. Like you don't want to just pick up one and like get to the end. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do that. Like why? Why would you do that? <laughs> um. Yeah. Let's talk about like our favorite book of the month this year. Oh man. Top like three. <laughs> Yeah, let's do top three. I can I can probably do top three. Okay. Well, let's go, let's go hard. <laughs> can we like can we recap our year first? So January, yeah, yeah. We January out with was Mistborn. Mm -hmm. February was these Good. broken stars. March, March was, was um uh, the the how to break up one. Um, oh, we should hang out sometimes. We should hang out sometimes. 
how to break up. How to break up. Uh, April. Oh, it was on October to here? No, I think that was May. Yeah, that was May. Damn it. Oh, 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 I know what it is. Queen of the Tearling. Oh, yeah. Queen of the Tearling. Queen of the Tearling. Then we had Sonochi here, Ember in the Ashes. Then we had the, mm, what was, oh, oh, oh. Finding off Audrey? Page. Off the page. Oh, off the page. page. Off the page. July was Finding Audrey. No, 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 August was Finding Audrey. Oh, what was July? July. July, what are you? What were you? Paper Damn Towns, it. Paper Towns. Paper Towns. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then August, Finding Audrey. Audrey. Then... September was Miss Peregrine. Miss Peregrine. Miss Peregrine. And now it was Hollow City. <laughs> Hollow City. Oh. <laughs> Hollow City. Hollow City. October was... Uh, Six of Crows. Six of Crows. That was great. November, and then, Illuminae. Illuminae. And then Winter. Winter. Woo, we did it. Yeah, <laughs> you have to reference good reads. <laughs> Very good year, I feel like. We've had wow. really good books. Like... And Ember in the Ashes, I really loved. Illuminate, Finding Audrey, Mistborn. Um, <sighs> this one, Winter. Winter. <laughs> it's like my top five right there. We had, a, we had a good book explosion year. Yeah, we had a really good book explosion year. Yeah. Really uh, great books. Okay. Um, okay, that was my top five. You guys go. <laughs> your top five. <laughs> Say Mistborn. Yeah. Like the last three books we read here, like Winter, Six of Crows, Illuminate. Oh, did I not say Six of Crows? Six of Crows. That's fifty yeah. percent of the books. Those were all fantastic. Um, you know, like, you gotta tell us what your favorite book of the year that we the book explosion book was. Yeah, yeah. tweet us, tweet leave us, us, tweet us. Yeah. What was your favorite? Yeah, tweet us your top three. That way we also get an idea of like your favorite genre that we read and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm not allowing Hollow City to be in my list just because I read that in a year prior. It doesn't count. So my favorite was Six of Crows. Mm -hmm. Then it was Mistborn. Then it was Illuminae. And then Finding Audrey, I think. And then Remember the Ashes. And then all of the rest of them. Winter <laughs> is not on your top? Oh, Winter's not on your oh, top? It is on my top. I don't know where to put it, though. <laughs> It's oh. literally so hard because, like, they were I would all say it's after Six of Crows because I, like, love Six No, it, yeah, it, it's after Six of Crows because I love Six of Crows. It's yeah. my favorite of this Six year. of Crows was great. Yeah. Um, it's funny how we all say Mistborn and Six of Crows, and those books are, like, really similar. Yeah, like, yeah. Ice, yeah. high fantasy world, okay. like, the crew with the leader. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Mistborn is just, like, a bigger Six of Crows. Like, yeah. bigger. Um, but... Okay, now our next January book of the month is so excited. Passenger <laughs> by Alexander Bracken. By the lovely Ooh. Alexander Bracken. It comes out January 5th. Oh, man. Ooh. I started it, and I'm really excited. It's so yeah. beautiful. Did, you, did any of you guys start it yet? No, I don't I have, have it yet. The writing style just feels so much more sophisticated. It's like she kicked it up 50 notches of sophistication, Alex. Oh. Yeah, I've heard, like, the writing style is, like, completely different than The Darkest Minds. Yeah. I mean, because The Darkest Minds is very, like, you're in her head. And here, it's very, like, a sophisticated, very much a sophisticated head. <laughs> <laughs> All the wording is very sophisticated. <laughs> and it has a blurb by Sarah J. Mass, so that's very promising. Ooh. Ooh. I'm very excited for that book. Yeah. Um, our live show our is going to be show. on January 30th, so tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this channel. Definitely. And join us. Yes, join us. It's going to be great, because I've only heard, like, the most amazing reviews about Passenger. Like, no one's like, it was okay. And they're like, it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're kicking 2016 off with a, with a pretty solid Bang. choice, I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Should we, like, um, give a synopsis as to what this is about? Yeah, well, I think all you really need to know is that there's time travel in this book. <laughs> time travel, yes. <laughs> and it, like, um, our main character, because I've read the first 20 pages, uh, is a violinist. Ooh, she's a violinist. Uh-huh. Very cool. Mm -hmm. right. Can I take a second and, like, 
thank everyone who's been with us this year reading with us because it's been such a fun, fantastic year for books and sharing it with you guys has been amazing. We love you guys. Love you so much and appreciate you, you for joining us. Yeah. yeah. Like, thank you so much for coming to the live shows. Like, without you guys, it's not fun, you know, to just to talk to ourselves for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> about the book it's like your questions and like fun commentary that makes it so great yeah like it's it's so much fun for us to see like your tweets excited about the live show or excited about the next book of the month um just yeah thank you for another great year of book explosion our second year <laughs> go team <laughs> <laughs> So excited to start the third one. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys all for joining us today again. Um, and tweet us, remember to tweet us your favorite book, Explosion Books, this year so we can, you know, see what you guys liked the best. And um, if you guys are going to be around at 9 o'clock, I'm doing a tweet along on the Harry Xmas Twitter um, to the Order of the Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts, you guys? I love you all. You're amazing. Yeah, what Jesse said. <laughs> join us for Passenger. Woo! Yeah, you join us for Passenger. It's going to be the best. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> next year. Next year, 2015. Well, I'll probably see you before then. In yeah, early. you'll probably post a video. Yeah, well, yeah like the next book explosion live show. <laughs> January 30th, guys. 7 p.m. EST. Bye. Bye. Bye.